So in Bible story today, we learned about the Samaritan woman who Jesus met with at the well. Now this woman probably did that chore every day of going to the well to collect some water and bring it back home. And when she got up that morning to do that chore, she probably didn't think that it would be any different from any of the days before. But even when she was doing the smallest thing like collecting water, she was still able to meet with Jesus. And when she met with Jesus, Jesus spoke with her and revealed that he was the Messiah that she had been waiting all this time for. And when she found out that he was the Messiah and that he had eternal life and water to give her, she got so excited and left her water jug at the spot where they met to go and tell the rest of her community so they could go to the well too and learn about and meet with Jesus also. And so what we're going to do today for our art station is we're going to play and make play with and make some pottery um, and we're going to shape it into a little water jug and water pendant to remind us of the Samaritan woman from our story today and the things that she gave up in order to follow Jesus. Once you have all your materials, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your container of cornstarch and you're going to measure out three quarters of it. Once you have three quarters, pour that into your mixing bowl. Next, you're going to want to add in your container of glue. You will get yours in a little container, but I just have this bottle of glue that I'm going to pour into my mixing bowl. When you add your glue, you're going to want to add all of it to the mixing bowl. Once you have all your glue into the mixing bowl, the next thing that you're going to want to add is some vinegar. You'll get this in a small little container in your bag and you're going to want to pour that in with the glue and cornstarch. Once you've added the vinegar, the next thing that you'll add is your lotion. You'll also get this in a small container in your bag and you're going to want to use your spatula to pour that into your mixing bowl with the rest of your ingredients. Once all those ingredients are in the mixing bowl, you're going to want to start to mix your clay. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but you're going to want to mix your clay and it'll be a little bit hard and sticky at the beginning. It'll be easier if you use one hand to mix and use your other hand to hold the bowl. What you're trying to do is you're trying to mix all of the ingredients together until it forms one big dough. This is what mine looks like right now, and if it still feels a little bit sticky or hard to stir around, then that's okay. What you can do is you can add the baby oil that came in your little package. Don't add all of it, just only add half of what's in the container. Once you've added half, you're going to want to mix it all up again. This is what my dough looks like now, and it's still a little bit sticky. So if your dough is still a little bit sticky, you can add a little bit extra cornstarch into that mix. Once you've added a little bit more cornstarch, you can keep mixing it around. The goal is to have the glue absorb as much cornstarch as it possibly can. You want your dough to move as one, and you want it to be easy to stir by the end of it. This is what my dough looks at the very end, and you want to be able to touch it with your finger without it coming off. It might still be a little bit sticky, but as long as it doesn't come off your finger, you should be good to go. Next, you want to find a space in your kitchen or dining table to lay down some cornstarch and roll out your dough. Once you've found a good workspace and poured some cornstarch onto there, put your dough right on top. It's best to just use your spatula and scoop as much of it out as you can and pour it right on top. Once you have your dough out, you're also going to want to pour a little bit of cornstarch onto your hands. You want to do this so that when you knead the dough, it doesn't stick to your fingers. Take off any of the extra dough that's sticking to the spatula so that you can roll that out too. Notice that it's still a little bit sticky to my fingers here, but that is exactly why we add cornstarch to our hands. Once you've got your dough out, pour a little bit of cornstarch right onto the top so that you can knead that into your clay. Next, you're going to want to start kneading your clay, and you just want to start folding it in onto itself and playing around with it with your hands. This will probably be a little bit sticky at the beginning, but that's okay. You want to keep kneading your dough 
until it gets to a point where you can play around with it like Play-Doh without having it stick to your hands. See here it's sticking to my fingers still a little bit. And so what you want to do if it's still a bit sticky is pick up some of the cornstarch that you laid out onto the table and mix that into the dough. Be careful of not adding too much cornstarch. You will know you if you've added too much cornstarch if your clay starts tearing and breaking. If you get to a point where your clay is too dry and it starts tearing and breaking as you knead and pull at it, then you can add some extra baby oil. This part might take a little while and it's all about feeling it with your hands to feel if it's still sticky or not. You can add cornstarch as many times as you need for the clay to get to a point where it isn't sticking to your hands anymore. Once you get to a point where you can pull your clay like this and it pulls and moves with you and it isn't sticking to your hands anymore, then you know your clay is good to go. What you want to do now is put some more cornstarch onto your work surface if you used most of that up and pull out your rolling pin. You're going to want to put a little bit of cornstarch onto the rolling pin so that your clay doesn't stick to your rolling pin when you roll it out. Once you've got that all ready, what you're going to do is you're going to put your clay right onto your work surface and begin rolling it out. I rolled mine out to about a quarter inch, but you can roll it out to however thick or thin you want your water pendants to be. Just remember that the thicker your pendants are the longer they will take to harden. This clay is air dry so once you make your pendants you can leave them for a few days and it will dry until it's nice and hard. So just think about how long you want to wait for your clay to dry when you're figuring out how thin you want to roll out your dough to. Once you've got it all rolled out, pull out a butter knife or something to cut into your clay with. And what you want to do is you want to use that to draw out some water droplet shapes. I'm just using a butter knife here so that it's easy for me to cut through the clay. Once you've gotten your teardrop or your water drop cut out, then what you can do is you can brush off the extra cornstarch and separate it from your rolled up clay. Once you're done, you can set that aside and do another one if you would like to. Another thing you can do is you can make a little clay pinch pot. What you want to do for that is roll it out into a ball in your hands and then Stick your thumb right into the middle to make a little hole. Then you want to go around the sides pinching with your fingers to make that hole a little bit bigger. When this story would have happened, the Samaritan woman would have had a clay jug with her to bring the water back home. And so this can be a good reminder of what she left behind in order to tell other people about Jesus. Now you can keep going pinching along the sides to make it as thick or thin as you want to. As you pinch along the sides of your clay pot, the sides are going to start getting a little bit taller than they were before, and that's okay. So this is how tall my sides are right now, and you also don't want to forget about pinching the bottom a little bit because that part will probably be a little bit thick compared to the sides that you've built up. Once you've got your bowl to a good thickness on the sides and along the bottom, this is what it might look like. Now I'm just going to pinch the top a little bit to make it a little bit more rounder. I want my closing to be a little bit smaller than the actual jug itself, but you can make your opening to your jug however big you want. This is what mine looks like at the end, but know that you can make your jug look however you'd like.